All right, and we're live. Omax face on it. Hey, yeah, man. So, got to keep you anonymous. I know I'm going to respect that. This is this is awesome to have you on, man. You've been you've been a little dormant for quite a while, huh? Yeah, uh, finishing up with the residency and then starting up in a in a new practice uh, with the guy I'm working with, and then preparing for world boards. That all kind of sucked up a lot of my time. So, but it's it's good to kind of start putting out some content now. Yeah, man. And you you finished the oral boards, I'm assuming. Yeah. I just took them this past February. Oh, dude, so maybe a couple of weeks ago or yep. less. Yep, 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 earlier and yep, almost a month ago now. Nice. Well, congrats. So that's off the tape. And you just graduated last year. Let's just run through the, the timeline a little bit here. Yep, just graduated last year. Uh, so June of uh, 23, um, started residency back in July of uh, 17. Got it. July of 17. Yep. yep. You just graduated yep. this past year. So, yep. so give me give me the lowdown. You said you started a new practice, um, yep. attending life. We were talking a little bit about that previously. Yeah. So... New practice is in a in a rural uh, part in the northeast, and it's a it's a really unique model, and and it kind of fell on my lap in a way because it's really just me and this one other guy that finished residency at the same time I did. So there's a lot of autonomy, but at the same time, a lot of bouncing ideas off each other. We both went to different programs, have different backgrounds, um, strengths, and whatnot. So. It's been fun. Uh, we've got a dedicated physician assistant with us as well, so that helps a lot with the with the call burden and clinic burden. And it's been great. You know, the clinic's built into the hospital, so in in many ways, it functions like a private practice. But given that we're built into the hospital and we take full facial trauma call, it's it's really a full scope um, kind of deal. So I, I've been enjoying it every every uh, every moment since. Yeah, wow. Wait, so this is a very rare model. Now, I heard about yeah. one of these things going on over in Wisconsin, in Green Bay specifically. Actually, the hospital is owned by surgeons, and they mm -hmm. had that outpatient practice that's connected to the hospital setting. Is that yeah. kind of what you're in? But I don't think Yeah, yeah. yeah. So th this is a very similar model in that sense, except while some of the surgical outpatient clinics are separate structures really close to the hospital, um, there are a fair number of clinics that are built into a separate wing of the hospital um and the oral and maxillofacial surgery clinic is one of them so they they've got a dental clinic that does your everyday kind of private practice general dentistry um, and then a floor above you at our clinic as well excellent excellent yeah. and it's not too far you living close to the hospital yep yep i'm just kind of renting out a, an apartment close to the hospital about a four minute drive so it's it's very convenient yeah, and th when did you start this? Was this just when you graduated in July? Or yeah. uh, so there was there was a month in between. So I started up in August um, of last year. So it's been about six-ish months. Um, so it's been it's been fun. Of course, I mean that month. You know, you need a little grace period, get the license, oh, yeah. and you know the whole. Absolutely. Thing. I mean, if anybody out there kind of looking for jobs and whatnot, and finalizing that contract, if you can give yourself that month in between and kind of work it into the contract, that's huge because. You need that month after after finishing the four or six year residency. That's a good point. You know, that's something I haven't considered. So take that little month, take that little Yeah. Month. Yeah. Unless it's like something that you just gotta concede if it's your dream job or whatever it is. But if you if you can get that month to just kind of recollect yourself and get things ready to go when it comes yeah. time in August, it's it's nice. Excellent, excellent. So I, I do wanna protect the anonymous stuff that we talked about previously, but yeah, I mean, I, I would say nine out of ten people already know who runs this phase, but I'm trying to do my best. Yeah, but but you know, you, exactly. The best thing is to keep you comfortable, keep you secure, yeah. that you know yeah. at least, right? Because I know we sure. have had plenty of conversations. But yeah, that said, right. for those of people that don't know you, without going into the specifics for a six year program, I, you know, I know, but but for a six year program, um, not what program? I don't want to get into the name. Let's yeah. just go directly from four or six, what you liked about it, what you didn't like about it, and then transitioning into attending life, right? Because that's what we're all looking forward to. <laughs> yep. Yep. So, yeah, six year program in the South. It was an experience, um, many more positives than negatives, but I don't think anybody goes comes through residency, whether four or six, with, with only glowing reviews of their institution <laughs> and their programs. But um, I, I felt that I was more than adequately trained in pretty much all all facets of of the specialty. It, I think it really tests you, especially early on. I think it, there are like certain checkpoints and 
and humps that you have to cross um, throughout residency. You kind of know what those checkpoints are beforehand, but every time you hit one of those checkpoints, it just feels so good. But I enjoyed most aspects of residency. I did really enjoy resident education um, on both ends of it. And kind of as you make your way through through residency, a lot of your knowledge will be reinforced based on the way that you teach it to us everybody around you. Um, so I, I did enjoy that aspect of residency. What I didn't like about residency, I think based on my specific experience, I think a lot of the bureaucracy that comes with working in a hospital, which is ironic because I'm working in a hospital well, now. You just go but, your... but that was probably my least favorite aspect of residency. I can't say that the day-to-day -day of residency where you have your ups and downs were things I didn't like about it because it's just something you have to accept. But mm -hmm. the transition to attending life, kind of moving the question along, has been nice, you know? I think um, I think things are busier than I expected them to be immediately out of residency, but I don't have any complaints about it, you know? it's yeah. It's been a busy attending life, but there's still been more than adequate time to kind of balance things out, do what I want, do what I want to do, whether it be hobbies or spending time with friends and family. But yeah, you know, it's it's a it's an interesting transition, primarily because I think most residents, as they're making their way through residency, um, there's no dedicated education when it comes to kind of your finances, financial management, because really, as a resident, it's kind of like a week to week or a month to month kind of thing. You're not really thinking about what I'm going to do. Um, with with the money that you have left over after your um, monthly expenses, so that's that's been very eye opening. And thankfully, I've had people that I kind of lean on for that because I don't understand most of it. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much where I'm at right now. Excellent, man. Well, it sounds like you're you know in good spirits. That's what it's all about, right? Yeah. You graduate, you get the role. You said that role kind of fell in your lap a little bit. Um, just just running off that sure. uh, residency in the in the south, right? Yeah, and then, sure. now you said you're you're in a hospital in the northeast. Yeah. On on that, or you from the northeast? And um, I'm from I'm actually from Canada. So born and raised just outside of Toronto. So. That was that was a part of it, and and it wasn't the main reason why, but it was a part of it because it's it's only a, like a four hour, four and a half hour drive back home, so um, it makes that somewhat convenient. But yeah, oh, that's great. Yeah, four four and a half. I mean, well, it's not a flight home in an hour, but it's still no. you know, it's yeah, and so getting it for a weekend if you need. Exactly, exactly. Outstanding. That's great. So, so Northeast, excellent. Now you're, you're settling back down there. You're from Canada though. So you're used to the snow, right? Well, you'd say that, but then after having lived in the South for six years, you, you kind of get used to whatever was most recent. And, uh, we had a couple of pretty heavy snowfalls and that was a crude reminder as to where it was <laughs> geographically. <laughs> yeah. Not so much snow like that down in the South. No, <laughs> no, no. We had, we had one storm my first year of residency where people had to, it was a really bad one. And then on top of that, the city was terrible about preparing for something like this. Mm. Um, and then when you mix everything together, people were abandoning their cars in the middle of the highway. It was just it was mm. chaos. Um, but we never had anything remotely close to that um, the rest of the six years that I was there. Oh, my. That is that's something else. Hopefully, yeah. you have a few days off, maybe. Maybe one. <laughs> yeah, I was on anesthesia at the time. And me and my co-resident were like, well, most people are going to fall out. But then we're like, no, nah, we should, we should go. It was early anesthesia, so we're like, no, nah, we gotta, we gotta show face. We went, and then most of the anesthesia residents called out and they saw us, and they just worked us real hard that day. But seriously, yeah, dude, it was. <laughs> we got, we got pummeled that day. We're doing, <laughs> yeah, we we're doing lunches for other people. It was what? Not, uh, yeah, it's horrible. Yeah, <laughs> anesthesia is uh, supposed to be the easy, light, you know, fun rotation. Yeah, I mean, anesthesia was fun, um, but I mean, the stakes, at least from what I recall, like that that first session that you're alone, because we we were paired for like a couple of weeks and then you function as a C at one. So you're, yeah. you're running your own room and I think most most programs are, are like this. And that first day when you're when you're getting read everything ready there there's some anxiety associated with it you know the stakes are high but like your i think your adrenaline is kind of going um but oh, yeah. it's very valuable um i was thankful the anesthesia department at where i trained was awesome you know we got a great experience on all facets of anesthesia you know not 
not just doing um, DLs um, day in and day out. So it was great. Yeah. We're going to start talking about anesthesia. So, so yeah, let's, let's transition back to, to where you are now. So now you're attending. Um, yeah. You said that you're taking, are you taking, you're not taking all facial trauma call. What's that kind of schedule like? So it's split between plastics and ENT. It's, there is, a, it's not like a one month MFS, one month plastic set of thing, nor is it like a week by week. It's just spread out evenly. Uh, throughout the years, throughout the week, um, so week. yeah, yeah. So, but it it's been it, it's been good. I mean, it's between the the two of us, surgeon wise, we've had like five or six mandibles. Um, I did an orbit in October, and I'm actually doing another one tomorrow. That's not to say we don't get call for more or- orbits, but of course, um, of course, yeah. a lot of that mid face trauma, you know, it, for the most part, non operative. Um, but yeah, we've had a bunch of noses, a couple of ZMZs. Yeah, so it's it's been it's been steady, but nothing not manageable. You know, it's very manageable, and yeah. both of us are trained to to be able to handle that. Excellent. And so it is split between you guys, OMFS yep. and Plastics and ENT, or you had said just yeah, all three. Yeah, so all... OMFS, Plastics, ENT, all all three take uh, are part of that CMF call pool. Got it. Excellent. So there, there are going to be a lot of pre dents and dental students listening to this. So just to break yeah. it down, from my standpoint at my residency, it's every third day is OMFS, and we also mm-hmm. split with plastics and ENT. Your mm-hmm. residency was how did that? Uh, work? Our residency was it went on a month to month basis for facial trauma. So oh. yeah, so there would be a month that ENT would be on for trauma the whole month. Then the next month it would be MFS the whole month. The day, the month after that would be classics, and it was it was still between those three services, but it would rotate a whole month at a time. How many chiefs did you have in your program? My year, we had two chiefs. Yeah, including oh, okay. so it would yeah. be one that's on, one that's off, one that's on, and then it'll yeah. all basically come together by the end of the year to make sure everyone gets you know. The yeah, right. it, it all evens out by the end, but yeah, essentially like that. Yep, got it, got it. Okay, so and so now it is every third day where you are as an attending now. Uh, yes. Yeah. And no, because we have a mid-level physician assistant that works with us as well. So she's able to, she's a part of the call schedule too. So it it's not quite Q3 between the three of us, but it's close yeah. to it. You know, having having that mid-level in this kind of practice is, is huge in terms of pre-ops, OR preparation, call burden, post docs, yeah. like all of that stuff. Intraoperative help, like she's... She's primarily an operative a physician assistant with like a background in cardiothoracic surgery. So wow. she's main goal is to help in the operating room. And so it's, she can kind of do everything. So it helps both the two surgeons and to kind of take a back seat to many things that would otherwise be our job. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's huge. And how much do you like trauma though? Cause I mean, you're definitely I, getting I like into trauma. I do like trauma. Yeah. No, there's not much, much more to say than that. I mean, it can be very frustrating sometimes depending on the, the fracture pattern, whatever the case may be. And they always come at inopportune times, but I do like the, the challenge of trauma mm. and then the awaiting of what that post-operative CT or TAN is going to look like. But yeah, I don't know how that would be doable on a Q2 schedule between you and your partner there. That's just, oh. yeah, yeah. But it, it, I mean, we're not Q2, you know, I mean, you, you, it's Q2 between the MFS people, yeah. but it's throughout the week. I mean, it averages out to a point where I'm taking trauma call, uh, three weekdays a month and one weekend. So it's really not that bad. That's not bad. Okay. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really not that bad because you have to account that. ENT and plastics are also kind of littered out throughout the week. You got three people on MFS, and ENT has tons of, they have more providers in the MFS department. They have more mid levels in the MFS department. So it, it's pretty like watered down for the most part. They could probably throw a few more mid levels your way. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, we could easily use another mid level, like one <laughs> or two, one dedicated for the operating room, and then one dedicated for more like a clinic based PA. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, it, that would be helpful, um, but yeah, for what we have right now, um, it's been it's been good. That's huge. So there's no oral surgery residency affiliated with your hospital. But from what it sounds like you were saying, there is a general dental clinic, correct? There is a general dental clinic. They don't have a GPR or anything like that. Um, they have GPR trained general dentists, but there's no GPR. No residency related to any of the 
of the Dell specialties. Okay. Do they take tooth colonal or they all? Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. That, so that was, I don't want to say a point of contention, but when I, I think when I interviewed there, that was something that didn't raise a red flag per se, but I could tell that when I was interviewing quote unquote with the dental department, they just kind of wanted to meet um, the incoming applicants. They, they had kind of hinted towards sharing tooth call. Um, and the interview was not the time to kind of debate that, but we've, we've come to a good, a pretty good agreement that what most people would consider tooth call is, isn't really managed by the, the OMFS department. Um, so that includes most of your, um, dental alveolar fractures and all that kind of stuff. Um, but where it came to contention was a lot of the head and neck infections, but we've got a good model and algorithm kind of set in place now. Um, so it's, it's been pretty, pretty smooth. Excellent. So yeah, several months later, you guys got the hang of that. That's good. Yeah. That's yeah. excellent. What's uh? Give me give me just a rundown of, of the weekly schedule. So you said maybe one or two weekends a month, maybe three weekdays a month. You're on facial trauma call. What about mm-hmm. the hours? What's this new activity um, that you're in? Yeah. So clinic. If it's a regular clinic day, um, first patient, whether it's a sedation or whatever the case is, um, usually seated by eight or just slightly before eight. Um, and then the last patient of the day, we, we kind of cap it so that the last patient's being seated around 4, 4.30 at the latest. So that's your regular clinic day. And then we, we're, on a, we're on Epic. So from a documentation standpoint, it's, it's smooth, um, especially if you come from a background where you use Epic during residency. Yeah. Um, so notes and stuff don't really take that much time. Um, yeah. And then we, we currently operate three, every three of the four Fridays a month. So the first three Fridays, uh, we have dedicated, um, all our time. Uh, we started off with every other Friday and then eventually got to a point where we were booked out till April and this, it was only like October, November. So they gave us another day. And even then we're, we'll scatter random OR days throughout the week if we know well in advance. So. Mm. It's it's busy from that standpoint. Um, so day to day, I would say get in around seven thirty, seven seven thirty. You're out of there usually by five thirty, six at the latest. Or days can be a little unpredictable, um, depending on how many cases you packed in and what the tone turnovers are like. But right. still, usually get out of there by six at the latest. That's okay. kind of like a day to day. And then when you're not on call, you have that those weekends off, right? You get to yeah. Oh yeah. When you're not on call, you have those weekends off. There's a lot to do in this area, um, whether it be um, hiking, boating, um, skiing. Nice wineries about a, a, an hour away from here, so there's tons to do on your weekends off, um, where you can just stay indoors. But right. yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So so the transition's been pretty favorable for you. That's that's right. Yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Oh, and, and you said, so the first three Fridays of the month, so basically the orbit, those nasal fractures, you were saying you would be able to kind of inch them in earlier, right? If you need yeah. to. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 okay. yeah. So for example, this this orbit that we're doing um, tomorrow, his trauma was on Friday, but there wasn't any need to do anything urgently. He, there were yeah. no symptoms. So we, um, just to kind of let that Adina go down, we just posted him for the middle of this week. Um, now I did have clinic in the afternoon, but we had to get it done sometime early to midweek. So it's the afternoon is usually just consults. So I usually will actually load all those consults so they can just come in the morning. I'll just triple book some time slots and just see them that way. Makes sense. How many chairs you got in your clinic? Each, each surgeon has three procedure rooms and then a dedicated, um, two, sorry, two procedure rooms and then a dedicated consultation room. Okay. And Monday through Friday, you're in with your partner every day of the week? Yep. Okay, cool. Cool. So that's yep. about six chairs, two ops, one yep. of the constant follow-ups, et cetera. Yep. yep. Nice. Not yep. bad. Not bad. Oh, yeah. How do you like the your partner so far? It's a guy. Oh, it's been great. Yeah, it's a guy. He trained also a six-year program in the Northeast. And uh, yeah, no, I think our, I think our, our backgrounds complement each other. You know, he went to a cancer-heavy program, and I did not. The program I went to, we did we definitely did full scope, but cancer was not one of them. And I think our training complements each other. It's nice to kind of throw ideas off each other. There isn't any kind of seniority factor, which, I mean, from my perspective, I, I've loved every second of it, but I can see how the traditional model of having someone like a, like a quote unquote mentor, um, already established, um, can be beneficial, but for us, we've, we'll just kind of trial and error, make things work. 
Yeah, that's great. And that just like you said, you know, you're all, all the things and experience there for the trainings complementing each other. I mean, that's yeah, that's really pretty ideal. You, yeah. you could get anyone, you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, it it's worked out very well. I'll put it that way. That's great. It sounds like he's got your back too. That's that's nice. That's oh, nice. Yeah. What are you doing outside of the hospital? It's kind of visiting for family, visiting friends, um, kind of picked golf back up again. I, I, I golfed a little bit when I was younger. So I kind of let go of doing anything golf related other than watching it and following tournaments for like the past <laughs> 10 years. But yeah, I know I've had, have the, had the ability to kind of get back into that, um, exploring the cuisine um, in the surrounding areas. And it's been a lot of fun and just pretty much just chilling out after all that time in residency. Yeah. Do you do the hiking? Do you do the biking? Do you do the ski? Yeah, I don't, I don't do the biking um, oh, as oh. much. Um, but definitely the hiking, um, there's a lot of trails in this area. And if you wanted to drive out a little bit more, um, there's even more. So there's a lot of hiking, biking trails, uh, a lot of like floating that you can do in some of these smaller canyons, um, during the summertime and springtime. So, yes. That sounds like fun. Probably fishing. Too. I don't know if you're, you're a fisher. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of fishing. I'm not a big fisher myself, but, um, there is a ton of fishing. I was actually talking to a patient this morning about, uh, He's telling me about all the ice fishing here during the winter time, which I thought was pretty cool. Ice fishing. That sounds yes. really cold. Yeah, it is. It is. I've, I've never done it myself, but, um, it seems to be an experience. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. Cool. So you're, you're, you're getting to explore the surrounding areas and such. Where does Omax face the account, the Instagram account fit into your daily life now, as it starts to be yours again, now that yeah. all those are finished. Um, so now that I'm kind of, I'm going to start putting out more stuff um, after a while of just reposting all things. Um, it it takes a little bit of a new dimension in the sense that I'm done with the with the board certification process. So I've kind of seen things from a different light in terms of board preparation and what's important, what's not important. So that's that's kind of like going to be the new wave of the page. But other than that, it's it's really something that I dedic I'm going to start dedicating more to like weekends. Um, it's hard to really do anything during the week, but during weekends, I'll kind of think of topics and Q and A and all that kind of stuff that I've been doing. Yeah, I really like the cleft lip palette combo that yeah. you went on over the weekend with that story. That was great. That was just two days ago. Yeah, that was yeah, great. That was just two days ago. Yeah, I like that one a lot. You know, side thought. I think you'd be excellent at helping put together in free time, of course, and it wouldn't be like an overnight project, but to put together kind of like a Q bank, almost like a U world situation. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I know what you're talking about. And there was a point where I was actually saving all the questions from the stories. Um, you know how you can save stories and whatnot. Oh, yeah. um, but what I what I found was, and this was a couple of years ago, and they might have fixed it by now. But what, what was happening was if you tried to go back into a old story of a question, the wrong answers would be highlighted green. There's something with the, with the formatting that changes yeah. when it gets archived. And so then I... Took, took all of them out because I was like, I don't want the wrong information being disseminated based off this archive story situation. So mm. otherwise, I, I, wanna, I wanted to compile all the questions, and maybe I will someday. Um, but there's bigger and better projects out there that are kind of working on those types of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we still need it, you know? Actually, yeah, I actually have another person. That's good at um, compiling questions and topics yeah. and such. Um, yeah. Maybe we'll we'll have that conversation one yeah. day. To talk about it because y yeah, you got to know the right pieces, and there's there's a process yeah. to it. But we'll we can definitely get into that. And then what about you? Still doing the merch? You still doing the merchandise? Yeah, the the merch the, the the store is still there. I mean, that whole store started off as a satire for all the merch that other people would do but yeah i don't i don't really promote it as much as i did at one point but it's it you know people will get something here and there and that's nice but yeah maybe i'll start promoting it a little bit more hey you know it's it's an idea i wanted yeah. to know what's the story of omax face i know what omax face stands for that's not the question the question yeah. is where did it kind of come from yeah your logo by the way did you make that yourself or someone else made that uh, i made that yeah I mean, it's outstanding. Where did you yeah. come up with that? It's just, it's perfect. Uh, so it, it, the logo and the, the origin of the page tag goes, goes back to, I guess you could say early, early to mid-ish 2020. Um, and I was 
in January of 2020, right before COVID, I was in a pretty bad car accident and I was in the hospital for about six and a half weeks. And after I was discharged, maybe like a couple of weeks after I was discharged, COVID really hit. And I had already been, I had just finished general, or I had just finished med school and was going to start general surgery that June. So I had been away from our specialty and any education related to our specialty for a while. And I hadn't really read that much during intern year because it, it was just difficult. Yeah. So then I took that opportunity to kind of, I didn't have Instagram before that. So then I joined Instagram because people were like, oh, there's some cool pages that show like surgery and this and that. And it got to a point where I'm like, oh, these are all cool surgeries, but there's nothing kind of bridging that gap, that knowledge gap of like, okay, why, why do we do the surgery? What's the indications for the surgery? What's the anatomy related to it? All that kind of stuff. So yeah. I started, I didn't really plan it. It just kind of happened, but I just started kind of posting things in the stories and then eventually I was starting making little posts based on what people were saying and then a couple of bigger pages promoted it um and then it just kind of became what it is it's got a little bit of a cult followings um but yeah that's kind of where it started it was really just a learning tool for me and it just turned into what it became it big too and it came big fast i mean it did great yeah. and then it is unfortunate that you know in the circumstance of the events but I don't know. But I mean, I think you turned it into the best you possibly could, right? I mean, Jesus, yeah. six weeks in the hospital. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, I don't know. It was it was a it was a tough little stretch, but um, yeah, no, I I agree. I I'm kind of glad this is what came out of that because otherwise it was not too many good memories from that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't, I don't want to dig into that too much. Um, hopefully, you weren't on call or something when that all arose. No, I was actually post call. Um, so I had just the reason why it happened was because I was post call. Let's put it that way. Was it fatigue or anything? Right? What's that? It wasn't like you know physician fatigue or anything, right? You weren't just getting off out of a thirty six. Yeah, no, that's exactly what it was. Um, I was oh. up for yeah, I was up for about close to forty eight hours. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, it's on me many, many ways. If I felt sleepy while driving, I should stop. And do but, a, uh, and do a pull over and sit in the passenger seat and catch a, a, a probably not. To be quite honest, to be quite honest, hindsight twenty twenty, I don't think I would have done anything differently because when I got into the car, I clearly remember feeling totally fine. But it wasn't until I was maybe like a minute away from home that I kind of hopped up on the median and my eyes opened up and I, my eyes opened up like maybe. A second or two before impact. Dude, no, no, there's there's no way you could take any responsibility for that. Like, look, getting yeah. as far as is functional, one thing, but you were almost home. And two, yeah. you should be put in that, in that situation where you're working 40 hours in a row. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it's an, an, it's an anomaly, you know, like this doesn't happen all the time. But I, think there, I know for a fact there's tons of residents that probably shouldn't be driving home when they drive home after after a, a call of light. Um, no, you, you're going to stay another night in the hospital after working 40 hours? No, like you got to get some real sleep. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So you're yeah. going to be, I don't know. I don't know. Like <laughs> there are answers out there and I think yeah. they have them, but. Yeah. And, the and, and to be fair, it was not on, it was not on um, the general surgery service. Like it, with MFS, you know, like it's a smaller service. General surgery was really good about kind of keeping an eye on our hours and, I would say our our department was too, for the most part. But every now and then, especially when there's a transition of residents leaving, residents coming back, there's always a little period of time where you're down bodies. Um, so oh yeah, it it it's just kind of part of the circumstances. But um, there's definitely ways around it. You know, a lot of institutions will implement paid paid like Ubers and Lyfts uh, for residents um, post call. Really? Um, oh yeah, I know a fair number of hospitals that do that. We, that's course. an easy solution. Why? I didn't yeah, know that. Absolutely. Yeah, no, my, my hospital didn't do that. But it's so yeah. simple. It, yeah. There should be a, a program card. If you need you, you pop the number and you get home safe, right? Yeah, like that's, no, absolutely. That's, that would be the logical thing to do, but that, that's a cost for the hospital. And the bigger the institution, I think, the stingier it gets with all the all the red tape. You're right. I uh, yeah, yeah. I've I've certainly noticed things like that. But then you're right. You're like other programs. They they just in the same pro different in the how do I say that same program different resident specialty has has a better way of managing residents' time after call and stuff. Yeah. 
I know a yeah. lot some of the the residents of my program, whenever they are on call, their program buys them lunch, buys them dinner. Yeah. And I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, yeah. We we don't get bought lunch, but we, when we take call days, we get like a little siphon on this little card. I think it's usually two hundred bucks a month, so it's it's something. It's something. Um, we don't get yeah. that. Yeah, and then you can just put, use that towards all the food in the hospital, which our hospital actually was quite good. You know, it had some good food, That's but good. but yeah, I mean, it is what it is. I mean, I don't think there's an easy fix to to the whole work hours thing, um, especially when. It's a smaller department, you know. Most MFS departments are small in comparison to most other surgical departments. So, oh, yeah, it, no. from a body standpoint, we're busy services, especially if you have a lot of inpatients, and just not having enough bodies is always going to cause people to work more. What is your take on the non-categorical resident? Oh, I think it's great. We did not have one when I was an intern um, at my program, and then probably about four. Four ish years ago, they uh, implemented a non categorical resident, and I thought it's awesome. I mean, I think from an insurance perspective, the, the mm -hmm. overall burden is spread amongst one of, an additional person. And I think from the non cast perspective, this is really the best glimpse you're going to get into what you're signing yourself up for. So I, I have, I mean, I don't know if there's any controversy about the non-categorical position, but I, I have no problem with that. Oh, no, no, I didn't mean, I didn't mean it as far as controversy. I meant uh, okay. it as, as far as like a solution to it, it, exactly what you said, spreading the load. Oh, after, that's what you meant. Uh, okay. Okay. You know what I mean? Like that's, yeah, um, that's yeah absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. The the issue comes into funding. Like it, you're it's, taking it's a regular the, intern salary. It's not like a PA who's taking 130. Probably what yeah. you're making, right? Yeah. Like the the question, and I can. This is just from experience in my program. The question becomes like, where is this money coming from? Especially if it's a, is it is it a hospital based program or is a program affiliated with a dental school that's affiliated with a hospital? You know what I mean? So yeah. a lot of the times the bureaucracy around where is the money coming from and who's going to approve that position is wow. it's just mumbo jumbo between the hospital and the dental school in many, many cases, not all cases. But yeah, no, we've had non great non tasks at the program that I've had trained at. So yeah, I, I definitely think non casts are necessary. I wish our program would get one. And Help out, but yeah. Uh, what, what do you guys? Five, how many? How many interns do you guys have? Do you guys yeah, take? Also, also, yeah, I don't want to mention the program too much, although it's a known thing, I'm sure. But just just for protective purposes, we have sure. no nine cats. We have three residents a year. One's a four year resident. The other two are sixes. So we have sixteen in the program. Okay. Four of them are. But um, yeah, no no nine cats, and it's I'm a third year resident. I'm finishing up third year, going nice. into chief year, and I, I just got the March and April schedules. I'm Awesome. Oh, awesome. Good. You're here, but so. Yeah, ours was, ours was similar. Like when you finish med school and you come back onto service, you're still taking primary call. So oh, weekends too. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's yeah. Primary call on weekends as a senior level resident is kind of uh yes. In the, you know. Yeah. Well, the way you get around that is by not calling the third year. Well, I guess in our program, the third year we call them mid levels because they had just finished med school. So they had spent less time in actual MFS residency than you have as a third year. So it's a different, it's, it's not comparing apples to apples. True. So it would feel much more devastated to take primary call in your position than I would at a program like mine. Oh, I, I, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Right. Yeah. Because yeah. you've been, you've been on MFS that entire time, pretty much. Uh, whereas the, the third year at my program, like in a lot of other sixes, is that They've been through, they're in medical school, so they, they really only had that little bit in intern year that they're really exposed to on the bus, whereas you had more experience as a third yeah, year. I see what you mean. Yeah. yeah. And then you have a primary call person, first call going in, and then do you have a set, do you have a third? Uh, no, no. I, you, but my, the program that I trained at? Right, right, right. right. Yeah, no, no, it was just, um, just the two, just two people. Yeah, yes. okay, that's, that's what we got to, I know some, yeah. some has a three level thing, but uh, interesting, interesting. Yeah. So, so yeah, we, we could we could wrap it up. I don't want to be conscientious of your time. I know you sure. got everything, but uh, so just 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 to to summarize it up, what's personal life like like for you? You dating? You married? What's what's the next step? Nope, um, not dating, not married. Um, just 
kind of trying to figure things out on my own um, and just trying to take care of myself. I I can't take care of anybody else. Or, <laughs> But yeah, no, it's just kind of figuring out my own life at this point and what I'm interested in and what I want to do moving forward. And that's that's pretty much it. Yeah. And like, so what, even professionally, what's the, you got a full-time job now. You just yes. finished four boards. Like yep. your plate's pretty clear up at this point. Yeah. I mean, there isn't really... Any other examination that I'm kind of anticipating on taking, I don't, I don't anticipate doing any fellowships or anything like that in the future. So it's really just growing this practice, making the practice as full scope as possible, and just living the life and trying to figure out what I, what I need to do next in that in that practice and in my personal life. But that's awesome. That's really it. You know, just grow as much as you can. So do you feel like? The light at the end of the tunnel is finally here. Do you feel it? Uh, I mean, probably a little anticlimactic. I don't know. I, <laughs> residency just ends, and then you're you just you get your certificate and whatever the case is, and <laughs> then you just leave, and you're like, okay, I guess that's that. But no, it, it's it's nice. You know, it's it's a totally different level of um, responsibility. You know, you you don't have anybody looking over your shoulder or or kind of gonna take take any bullets for you um in terms of like protecting you medical legally you know it's all it's yeah. all on you the buck the buck stops at you so it can be a little nerve-wracking um in certain cases but otherwise it's been great excellent dude thanks so much for coming on yeah absolutely man thank you for having me yeah man and let's let's keep in touch i got some ideas for you with that with that side project now that your plate's cleared off let it clear off a little more we'll, we'll yeah. touch base all right all righty it sounds good to me man I'm looking forward to more of your content coming back. Absolutely. Thank you so much. All right, brother. Thank you. All right. Take care.